Vladimir Putin has dismissed Ukraine's counteroffensive, saying his forces are inflicting catastrophic losses on Ukrainian troops. The Russian president also claimed Ukraine would soon run out of weapons. But a prominent uh, presenter on Russian state television has said Ukraine has achieved some successes and warned of tough battles ahead. After days of silence from the Kremlin, Vladimir Putin finally remarked publicly on Ukraine's counteroffensive in a question and answer session with selected journalists and bloggers. He played down the offensive and said the Ukrainians' weapons would soon run out. What's the Ukrainian army fighting with? Do they make their own tanks, leopards or Bradleys? They don't produce anything. Their defense industry will soon be non-existent. What do they produce? Ammunition is being delivered to them. Military equipment is being supplied to them. Everything is supplied to them. That won't work for long. Putin evaded a question that was perhaps designed to be critical about whether the Russian army would take back land recaptured by the Ukrainians. Instead, he joked with the journalist. I can only tell you that in private. <laughs> in general, everything will depend on the potentials that remain once the so-called counter-offensive has ended. But I think the Ukrainian leadership, whatever they may be like, will have enough sense to make the right decision, given the catastrophic losses they are suffering. But on Russian state television, a daily show normally laden with propaganda gave a more serious assessment of the situation. When a studio guest appeared to ridicule Ukraine's counteroffensive and joked that the fighting only exists on YouTube, the TV anchor, who's also a member of parliament, was quick to correct him. No, it's not just on YouTube. We have to admit the Ukrainians have had some successes. The coming months will be tough for us. We have won back some areas, but we've also lost some. It's a tough battle. But another propaganda show, broadcast at prime time, firmly blamed the West. And it claimed the latest counteroffensive is being controlled by foreign powers. This conflict has become borderless. It's borderless in its goals, in its geography and in its weaponry. It's absolutely obvious that Kyiv is no longer making decisions for itself. For Kyiv, this counter-offensive is bad. The decision to launch it was made for Kyiv, based on the interests of the US and evidently the UK too. While Moscow is still keen to leave no doubt that it will succeed in Ukraine, the Kremlin does appear to be preparing Russians for a long, drawn-out conflict. Let's get more on this from DW's and Russia analyst, Konstantin Egert, who joins us from Vilnius. Uh, welcome back, Konstantin. Uh, we just heard Vladimir Putin downplaying what's happening on the ground. Um, is he lying deliberately, or are people around him still too scared to give him the full picture? Phil, if I only knew, if I lived in Putin's bunker, I could have told you uh, with more precision. Uh, personally, I think that uh, Putin is always lying. That is, to me, uh, an absolute sort of uh, given in any situation. Uh, the extent to which he's being well informed, well, I suppose that he's getting the outline of information, which may be true. Uh, but he's not a military person. He does not understand much about strategy, about, you know, basically all things military. And here I think the possibility of, um, well, giving him a better picture than, than, than reality, well, I think it's quite strong. Uh, Putin is surrounded by an equivalent of a medieval court in which pleasing the monarch is the most important thing. So... I suppose that he just wouldn't understand a lot of things that happen on the ground just because he does not have an experience and um, and uh, enough military education for that. Right. Uh, so, and looking at the other elements of, of, of bad news that have um, been hitting Russia recently, these reports of attacks on Russian uh, territory, for instance, how is that uh, being sold to the public? Is it indeed, is the public indeed uh, uh, aware of uh, many of these attacks? Well, it's interesting. The uh, attacks uh, are being uh, 
basically talked about by uh, the local authorities. Uh, this gets reproduced by state media, but it does not get too much uh, debate on the uh, propaganda talk shows, the ones that uh, you, the fragments of which you showed in the previous piece. Uh, why? Because I do not think the government wants too much discussion about whether it's able to protect Russian territory proper. Uh, but at the same time, bear in mind the fact that um, uh, Russians can still still watch YouTube, can still uh, read an extremely popular messenger called Telegram. Uh, they cannot just you know sweep it under the carpet. I suspect that the scale of these incursions is not as massive as to provoke the Russian population to panic or into thinking that Putin cannot secure anything. But what I think is of interest is that uh, the state bureaucracy, people that basically prop up Putin's regime, they cannot help but notice that uh, this is something that reminds chaos. This is something that provoked for the first time actually displacement of several thousand Russians that well, ran away from this fighting. So I suppose that I mean, if I were, Phil, um, a, a normal sort of um, civil servant, I would be thinking, well, is everything as good as uh, the authorities are trying to tell everyone? Right. And I would say probably not. And help us to understand the role of the war bloggers that were in that audience. Who are they? Who are their messages for? Well, their messages are for the general Russian population, especially for those who are not indifferent to fighting. Because according to the latest figures uh, published by basically the only remaining semi-independent uh, pollster, the Levada Center, 50% of Russian population just do not follow the war. They, and I think that rings true to me. I think people are conscientiously isolating themselves from the reality of war. But those, let's say about 25, 30% that follow it, this is for them. This is for those active use of social, of social media, Telegram, YouTube, uh, for those who read uh, websites of Russian newspapers. Uh, it is a very, very massive propaganda campaign conducted by notionally independent people that are on the ground, that are embedded with the troops, and which are giving uh, this mix of propaganda and what um, once was called the pornography of war, you know, all these kind of gory details, all this uh, impression that they're in the middle of the fighting. Uh, and these people, it's not for nothing that Putin received them, the, they are very important uh, to uh, the Kremlin because they speak the people's language. They are much closer to the target audience than, um, let us say, those propagandists that we see day in, day out on television. Right. So, so this is just such a, a, a weird world that, that people are, are in Russia are inhabiting, given that Putin is controlling most of the media outlets. So if 50% if are paying no attention to what's going on, most of the other 50% are believing what they are told on state media. So when that much smaller percentage goes outside the bubble and says, well, look, there is a war going on and it's not going well, well, they must be treated like, I don't know, a bit like flat earthers are, because really they are such a small part of the consensus. Oh, well, you know, Phil, it's uh, very interesting what you say. Indeed, it is a bit of an Alice in Wonderland uh, situation in Russia. It's it's quite weird. But uh, I'd say that a lot of those people that are indifferent, they are deliberately indifferent. They pretend that they don't know. They pretend that they delegate prosecution of the war to the government and they instead go and, I don't know, walk in the park or watch comedies. Uh, I suppose that the Russian society in deep knows that something's going wrong. But fear and uh, this kind of uh, learned civic impotence are the hallmarks of the Russian society today. And this is very good for Putin, frankly speaking, because mm -hmm. he can do whatever he pleases and the majority of the people just do not want to know or pretend they don't want to know. So those who raise their voice are punished. And uh, as you probably know, uh, some people that you know, post critical stuff on social media went to jail for seven, eight, nine years. Uh, these people 
are punished so severely because the government wants to preserve this balance. Right. The minority that is politically active and the majority that is indifferent. Thank you for that, Konstantin. Konstantin Egert, DW's Russia analyst. Thank you. Thank you.